evening. Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, December the 1st. We'll sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be beneficial. Uh, we will sing uh, from our songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. If you do not have that book, perhaps you have another one, or you can Google the song. I will give you the number and the name of the song. The first song that we will sing is number 239 in moments like these. 239 in moments like these. <clears throat> in moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. I love you. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. I love you. The next song we will sing is number 578. 578, We Will Glorify. 578, We Will Glorify. <clears throat> We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 763, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. 763, O Master, let me walk with thee. <clears throat> o Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me the secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the way with feet to stay and guide them in the homeward way in hope that sends a shining ray far down the future 
just running away. In peace that only thou canst give with thee, O Master, let me live. We are told on the first day of the week to commune with the Lord. We are commune to commune with the Lord just the way he uh, explained it to us on the night in which he was betrayed, when he was in that upper room with his disciples. And they uh, were saddened, I'm sure, by his news, but uh, he gave them a remembrance. The remembrance is communion. The remembrance is the Lord's Supper. He told them that the way to remember him that is on the first day of the week, they would break bread. They would break the bread that symbolized his body. They would partake of fruit of the vine that would symbolize his blood. In the 20th chapter of Acts, when the apostle Paul was pre preaching at the town of Troas, we know that uh, he very succinctly said to them and said to us, and then on the first day of the week, they broke bread. And so that's what we are doing now. It was so important that Paul wrote this same thing to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. On the first day of the week, we are to break bread, to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us, to bring about a new covenant, a covenant based on the forgiveness of sins and the grace of God through the blood of Jesus. Let's give thanks. Thanks for the bread. We're so grateful, dear God, that in your divine wisdom at just the right time, you sent Jesus to us. We're just so thankful for those three and a half years of his ministry when he taught those wonderful words that are described in the Sermon on the Mount and in so many of his parables, that he showed his power by doing miracles but at this point in time, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to make a one-time sacrifice for each one of us. No longer would the sacrifice of bulls and goats be necessary, but Jesus gave himself up on the cross. As we partake of this bread, help us to remember the body that Jesus gave in our stead. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the cup. We're so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, for Jesus' willingness to shed his innocent lifeblood, the blood that washes away our sins, the blood that uh, provides redemption for each one of us. As we partake, help us to remember that Jesus did that for each one of us that we might one day live with him and God the Father. Be with us as we partake of this symbol of his blood. We pray it in his most precious name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper being complete, we are reminded that there is one more thing that we are to do on the Lord's day. And that is that we are to lay by in store and give back to the Lord that which is his. Lay by in store. How much as we have prospered. We are to lay by in store that which we have prospered and give it back to the Lord. We know that we're giving him his own, but from a practical, practical purpose to bring others to the Lord. To help those that are in need, uh, it takes money. And uh, we just pray that uh, those stewards of that money will use it in such a way that uh, you, our God, will be glorified. Let's pray for the offering. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be 
indeed cheerful givers. Help us to understand how much we have been blessed and then give accordingly. Help us to understand that your church is your kingdom here on earth. And the kingdom must operate uh, within the confines of this world. Help us to understand that and help those that use these monies to use them in a way in furtherance of your word. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. The last song that we will sing is number 580. 580. The Joy of the Lord. 580. The Joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I hope you uh, enjoyed singing praises to the Lord. We sing praises to the Lord because he is our Lord. We sing praises to the Lord because he deserves those praises. And with that, uh, as our the praise portion of uh, this evening's worship service is completed, we come to the part about spreading the word and about uh, understanding what the word is all about. In Psalm chapter 1, uh, it, verse 2, it says, In his law he meditates day and night. Let's be sure as Christians that we do indeed meditate on the word. If you were there this morning, you heard that uh, the lesson uh, this evening was the key to success is endurance. The key to success is endurance. You know, if, if we look at the Olympic Games, especially track and field, probably my favorite part of the Olympics, we have races from the 100-yard dash all the way up to the 26-mile, 385-yard marathon. And so we have a, a race that relies on raw speed and then a race that relies on one's endurance over a period of time. And you know, I, our, our life is like a series of 100-yard dashes. We wake up to 100-yard dash the day. We wake up to face the day and the opportunities that it brings to each one of us. However, the accumulation of days which comprises our life here on earth, is a marathon. It is an endurance race. And you know, uh, it almost seems that in life, we move from one emergency to another mer emergency. Uh, uh, in many cases, uh, the uh, weights of anxiety uh, are upon us. Uh, the thread uh, of our patience sometimes wears thin. Some people snap at the smallest things. But you know what? We need to learn how to cope with life in, in the fullness of our life. And that fullness of our life is a marathon. The fullness of our life must be run with endurance. Now, another 
term for endurance is perseverance or persistence. There is certainly something different about running 26 miles and running 100 meters. Uh, if we run 100 meters, seconds after we start, the race is done. But in running that 26 mile marathon, it will take a couple of hours for the race to be finished. And you know, to understand that, we need to understand that we must live life with perseverance. Um, we know that life has many high pressured moments, seemingly high pressured moments. And Jesus explains to us about anxiety. He says, how many of you by worrying can add uh, an inch to your height? Uh, worry and anxiety won't take care of it. Uh, in Philippians chapter four, verses four through six, the apostle Paul almost echoes those words where he says, be anxious in nothing. Why? Because we have help. We have help in this endurance race of life. That help is within the confines of our relationship with our Lord. And so with that in mind, let's understand um, what uh, we are supposed to be doing here in life. We are supposed to be sowing the seed of the kingdom. We know that in the parable of the sower, that uh, the seed that we have to be most interested in is the seed that fell on good soil. The, the seed that fell on good soil pertains to those who took the word of God in their lives with an honest heart and a good heart and held it fast. And if we look at the end of that, it says, bear the fruit with perseverance. When we plant the seed, we don't expect an instant crop. We are patient. We do whatever it takes for that seed to, to germinate. And as the plant starts to grow, we do everything that we can to put that plant in an environment in which its growth will be maximal. And that's what our life is. Our life is like a seed that's been planted in good soil. And we must do everything possible to maximize what we get done in our lives. Um, James, in his epistle, explains to us something about the trials of life. In James chapter one, verses two through four, he says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing, ready, that the testing of your faith produces, here's this word from the title of my lesson, it produces endurance. It says, let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. We are to run the race of life with endurance, with perseverance. With that, let's look at a couple of steps that I believe will help us to understand what endurance is all about. First, we have to realize that we, uh, in essence, have one purpose in life. And so I might ask that question, what do you see as your purpose in life? What is it that you want to accomplish? When, when you die, what do you want people to remember you by? Uh, whether or not we believe it, uh, one day this earth is going to end. 
that is explained to us in the Lord's word. And Peter, writing by the guidance of God, said, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. We must accomplish here on earth what we were called upon to accomplish. And they must be great accomplishments. You know, in the book of Ecclesiastes, we have that wise man Solomon who literally tried everything, everything in his physical surroundings. And he did it uh, almost like uh, he was in a science class and, and doing a lab activity. And he tried everything that he could find to find and achieve real happiness in his life. And in the 12th chapter, when we get to the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon reveals the great secret. He's let us he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So what are we to do with our life? What are we to accomplish? We are to fear God and to keep his commandments. We must reach for the goal and the prize that the Apostle Paul talked about. What was that prize? Well, he explained it in Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14. He says, One thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward and lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. All right, there's step one. How about step two? Step two is don't add tomorrow's worries, right? Don't add tomorrow's weight to today's load. You know, we're carrying a, a difficult enough load in our life day by day. We don't have to carry tomorrows. What's that saying to us? It's saying, live your life just as the only way you can. Live it one day at a time. The Sermon on the Mount explains that to us in Matthew 6, 34. It says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And, and he proves this point by telling us about the birds uh, of the air and the lilies of the field, and he takes care of them. And so to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, we must look at the verse that precedes Matthew 6, 34. And that is, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Serving God will be one of our purposes in life. Third, understand that we're not fighting this battle alone, that there is strength and help that is available to each one of us. You know what? God understood this. And I believe with my whole heart that this is why God established the church through Jesus Christ not a building, but a group that is made up of people who are obedient to God. The church is to be filled with people that are like-minded. They are faithful brethren. They are faithful uh, to a fault. That's why in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, the Apostle Paul says that we are to bear one another's burdens. 
when, when we're struggling, that's not the time to quit. When we're struggling, that's the time to work harder, knowing that there is aid, knowing that it's not time to quit. And so we get help from the brotherhood. We got get help from those people that are like-minded. However, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, it says there's more. It says, draw or let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You know what? We all have those times in our life. And Peter, again, put it very succinctly in 1 Peter 5, 7, when he said, casting all your anxiety on him. Why? It's answered right there in that scripture. Because he cares for you. And Paul gave us that same assurance when he wrote in Ephesians 3, 16, the Father would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. The gift of the Holy Spirit that we got upon being baptized for the remission of our sins is where this strength of the inner man comes. You know, it is said that uh, sometimes uh, the spirit is the willing part of us, but it's the flesh part of us that's weak. We need to allow the spirit to dominate our lives. So we will do with them what we are supposed to do with them as Christians. And lastly, do you know what? We've grown to live in an instant society, haven't we? We are so used to things happening fast. Now, people have said this for generations and generations and generations, but it's more true today. When we want answers, we get our little uh, cellular device, we press a, a, a button, we type something in, and the next thing you know, we have our answer. We live instantly. We can get all the answers instantly. We need to learn sometimes uh, to wake up and, and smell the flowers. We need to learn to wait for God to work. And I realize <laughs> we, we live in that instant society. How many times have you on the road watch people zip through that yellow light? And sometimes it's even a little too late because before they even go through it, it is turned red. Why they do that? To save 45 seconds. <laughs> to save 45 seconds of a trip. They, they risk life and limb by rumbling through and not be able to wait. Think about the benefits that we have when we wait on God. Isaiah explained it to us in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 to 31. Let's take heed to these words. Though youth grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, here he is, but those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. See, this is what life is about. This is, this is what the endurance race of the years of our lives are all about. They are all about facing all of the trials that we might have 
and running with endurance the race that is before us. And so with that, two quick admonitions. Don't give up. Don't give in. Endurance will be rewarded. You, through endurance, reach that goal of being with God. We, we reach that goal of every Lord's Day, being with fellow faithful followers of God. But the real caveat, caveat of that is that we reach the goal of being with all of those saints that have taken on Jesus Christ in eternity. And it is worth it. Endurance is the key to a successful Christian life. And with that, you will notice it's the key to a, a successful Christian life. If you haven't uh, made up your mind to become a Christian, we offer the invitation to you this evening. We've uh, talked about many scriptures today. It's understanding and believing the word of God. And then it's understanding that our flesh has been weak and our spirit has not been dominant. And so we repent of our former lives. We confess with all of our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we are baptized for the remission of your sin. If you need to come to the Lord, uh, this is the invitation for you. If uh, you feel very strongly about this, you can get in touch with any of us and we will help you in any way that we can. Let's close uh, this service with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we understand the precarious nature of life. You know, life is, is full of troubles. There is anxiety. There is worry. But it, it is so wonderful for us to understand that we have help that we have help in our brothers and sisters in the Lord as we bear one another's burdens. But most of all, we have help from you. We have help in understanding the truth of your word, that we can really look at ourselves and say, be anxious in nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known of God. We know the end of that verse that says, the peace that passes understanding will guard your heart, guard your hearts. I just pray to Heavenly Father that we will come to understand that in our lives that we must uh, uh, live them in a way that we understand that uh, we want to do your will and be godly people in all things. Please help us in that aspect of our lives as we see your truths revealed to us through your word. Continue to be with us. Continue to bless us. Continue to comfort us. We ask this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing. Oh